Hey everybody, Scott Wilkinson here at Cedia Expo 2013. Uh, I'm talking now with Lori Fincham, the senior VP, or one of them anyway, at THX. And uh, THX, THX has got a lot of news uh, recently. One thing, you've moved your facilities. Yes, we have. And uh, I look forward to visiting them. I've been yeah. to the ones up in the northern Bay Area, but uh, now you're right down in the middle of San Francisco. We had ringside seats for the America's Cup. Ah. Must have been gorgeous. Couldn't, it couldn't be better, and the weather was fantastic. Yes, beautiful. We, we have a, we have a. It's a, it's an old building, but we did it up completely. We built new labs, new listening rooms, special project rooms. It's a really nice facility. And so all your uh, certification work goes on there as yes, well. Yes, it does. Every every we had to build special ones because it's actually quite noisy down there, as you might imagine. <laughs> and, and we're still trying to balance the air conditioning, so we don't either freeze or fry. You know? Right, right, <laughs> exactly, right. Um, Another very interesting initiative that I saw come across my email recently was um, a training program for retailers. Now, you and I have talked before about how important it is to get the message out about quality reproduction, reproduction as the content creator intended it. How does this work into that goal? Well, I, I spend quite a bit of my time just going around stores and imagining I'm a customer sometimes, and I go the in The mystery there. shopper. No, I, I just look at something and say, That's, can you tell me about it? Almost invariably, they can't. And, and it's not necessarily their fault. There's so much new stuff to learn, and they've been in the job six weeks. So we thought it would be a good idea if we work with the dealers. It's, we need to work with people with feet on the ground. They've got to be bricks and mortar dealers. And we're doing it primarily to support our partners. So where we are working with a display company or an amplifier or a speaker company, we want to get our message across. So we're going to do that by getting close to their dealer, James. So it's going to be their dealers. They're only going to be premium dealers. So premium dealers must have a premise and they must know what they're talking about. So we give them a little friendly quiz to see that they understand the basics of what we're doing. It isn't just to do with certification, it's many other things that we talk, we talk about. We want there to be a place where they're happy to sell what we certify, they understand, it helps our partners, but probably more important is if we don't, then the opportunities to see good pictures and see good, hear good sound are, are going to get less and less. We, the, the writing, I wouldn't say, is on the wall, but we are streaming, and let's face it, when you stream stuff, it isn't about how good can the quality be. If I have a better compressor, can I get twice down the same channel without anybody noticing? Well, now, if you don't go to the cinema, where are you going to see a, a, a good picture? And right. they, if they saw it, they would understand. So we thought it was, so we're just doing a short rollout with four people at this show, but we shall, we shall expand it to our other our other partners, especially in the display area, too. I've always thought that brick and mortar stores were very important. They're losing a lot of ground to internet sales. There's two aspects that I want to talk about. One is actually buying product, receivers, speakers, displays, and so on. A lot of people go online to buy them, but if you go into a brick and mortar store, hopefully you'll find somebody who knows what they're talking about, which is what you're talking about yeah, here. Yeah. And, and you can get information face-to-face, -face, you can ask questions. It's much more difficult to do if you buy online. Well, you can also see what they're talking about. You can go to the screen and say, this is the difference. I think they're just bewildered by choice. You, you know, I'll go into Costco and I'll look and say, imagine I was buying a TV, which am I going to choose? Does the price have to do with size? I don't know. What is a smart TV? Yeah. I love pictures. I love movies. And, yeah. and I would be bewildered. So I need to go to somebody who I imagine is on my side, you know? Exactly. <laughs> the, the car dealer that I went to twice, and I was satisfied both times. Right, right, right. Well, I think they're about, I think that the competition, where everybody just thinks it's about price, then where's the choice? If you're, if you're not cheaper, how can you be better? So they look for the top stars, the five-star reviews, but that's really like something of the top of the hip rate. There is, there is more variation, you can have cheap, and you can have very expensive things. They're going to go for the middle, the ones that sell the most. So the customer wouldn't be aware, for example, of the benefits of going to a much bigger screen or to higher resolution or better speakers. And the dealer's not going to stock it because the demand's not there. And then there's the issue of content delivery, which as you alluded to earlier, uh, you know, the streaming is very difficult to get a good, high quality stream. Uh, and yet that seems to be the direction we're going. Well, for most people, I think streaming is as good as, as above average TV. You know, you, uh, 
what I like about streaming, and I was chatting with somebody about it earlier today, is that I can see programs that I wouldn't normally get access to. So I can look at documentaries or obscure BBCs. Sure. So and I, you can watch them on your schedule yeah. when you so want. I, I think that that is great. I, uh, but The convenience factor. Yeah, yeah, but once the disc goes away, then I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know that downloading a movie over eight hours, you know, we're, no matter how keen we are, even if I want to play a DVD, I go to my cupboard and say, what am I going to play, and I pull one out. Right. That's what I do. I don't say, hmm, am I going to listen to this or watch this tomorrow, uh, I better find it, I have it in the store right. up the road. Right. So immediacy affects us all the same way, and, yeah. I, and I think that the way they deal, if 4K, for example, is going to take off, they absolutely know. I mean, I hope it does, because the pictures are just absolutely gorgeous, you know, and you looking at some 84 inch screen and thinking 25k is a lot of money I wonder if I can get that past the wife <laughs> but, but eventually I'll be able I will be able to afford it but sure. I don't want to get it and then find I can't get the the, the, the material to it and so. that is certainly a, a big concern with this new uh, 4k format or ultra HD uh, 2160p Joe Kane calls it um, is where is that content going to come from? For the most part, what we're going to first be looking at is up-converted 1080p. That can actually look really nice, you know. And in, it can. In, in the same way we used to have up-converters for your regular DVD right. and you saw it on, and you thought, wow. In the early this, days of this, HD. Yeah, this is nearly as good as the real thing. And, and I think it's very important that you get people in and then say, look, you're future-proofed. I, I, I would hate you to be cut out from hearing good sounds or seeing good pictures just because somebody decided whatever the latest uh, streaming format was good enough for most. If we just right. go for the average, that's really what it's going to be, isn't it? <laughs> and, <laughs> it's going to be average. And, and didn't what well, didn't hi-fi and video <laughs> files arrive from those people, but supposing I wanted something a bit better, what would I have to pay, where would I get it from? And they're the people that we like to deal with because we spend a life listening and, and watching and we know the craftsmanship went in. And what a pity nobody gets to see it. It would be like, you know, all the all the pictures in the Louvre were in black and white to, to save the lighting, you know. Right. <laughs> save the lighting bill. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Um, so what is THX doing in terms of 4K? I mean, are you, you, I believe you have a certification program for 4K displays. Yes, we do, yeah. Uh, what about 4K content? I mean, you have a certification for Blu-ray, right? Yes. And DVD, obviously. Yeah. Uh, are you working on a similar situation for 4K? The problem, I imagine, must be there's no disc format for it yet. Yeah. Um, there's only downloading, really. So I guess that leads to a second question, which is, do you do any certification with downloadable or streaming content also? We, we don't at the moment. I mean, we're really, we're really trying to understand 4K at the moment. We've had it in for it's, quite a it while. It is too new and still, you, yeah. And you've got, uh, you know, we've got the existing HDMI format, and then you've got HDMI 2 that's due that you could actually download. Everything has to be up converted unless you have a set that has a direct input. But that's pretty much limited to uh, Sony at the moment and I haven't seen any of their new format. I'm sort of waiting till I can see some of their movies on the little round box and I... Yes, yes, the hat box. Yeah, I, I haunt my local store and they say, well, no, we're still doing it off the server. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you should be able to contact somebody at Sony and so have should, them send you one. Yeah, but it would, be, it would be nice. But we do, and I understand a lot more about up conversion. I'm not a video expert, but we have people in the place. And, yeah. and the test uh, sequences and methods that we use, it, if you chat to Peter later on, you'll, you'll get a better gonna, insight. Yeah, we're going to talk with him a little bit later. Displays are displays, you know, and, and trying to understand why these... So we, we can do a lot of that with instrumentation. We'll still look at the pictures, you understand. When we do video, we, of course, do look at the picture, but we actually push the set further than the picture's demand. So we go in, let's say we see some anomaly in a pattern, and we'll say, I wonder why that is. How might I see that? Well, we think it might be. So then you go to picture to see if you can see edge effects or noise or mosquitoes and, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. And we try to pick an achievable but sensible level. I mean, I, I can tell you only one thing. If you learn how to see it, you can't unsee it. You can't it's not see just, it. Yes, it's just, I mean, you, you just know you're going to have to change. Yeah, yeah. In the couple minutes we have left, uh, I know you're more of an audio guy mm -hmm. by, by training, by temperament, you're a musician, you're yeah. a bass player, yeah. a man after my own heart. Um, <laughs> what is uh, going on with THX in terms of audio these days? Anything new? Well, we've been working, as you know, on uh, amplifier technology, and, and we're going to be uh, working with a partner to actually see one of our 
amplifiers come out and it's going to be very quiet and uh, have an enormous uh, and extremely low distortion. So I, I, my thought is that if you don't have anything getting in the way of the music, then jolly good. And I think quiet is good. I think being able to get down to the detail is, is good. And so we'll just see. We are getting involved with the launch of the thing because the demand will not come from the market because that's set by what you can uh, see in Amazon or something like that. We're just saying, look, if this is interest, take a listen. So we're, that's that's the thing we're going to do. We're going to show them what a really good amplifier should sound like. And is see this going to be a, 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 a THX product or are you going to let 